Welcome to another edition of Green is Good, and I'm so lucky to have my good friend with us today, Joanne Spigonardo. She's the Senior Associate Director of Business Development at the Wharton Initiative for Global Environmental Leadership, IGEL. Welcome to Green is Good, Joanne. Thank you so much, John. It's such an honor to be on the show today, and thank you again for the amazing partnership you have with the Wharton School and with the Initiative for Global Environmental Leadership, IGEL. It's so great to speak with you today. Oh, well, it's always great to speak with you. I was with you in person last week at your amazing program at the Wharton School, the great and iconic Wharton School, worldwide known. And it was just so great to be with you in Philadelphia and to have you on the show today talking about all the important initiatives you're doing and all the great people that you bring together and brands you bring together. This is a real honor for me. But before we get talking about all the great work you're doing at Wharton, I want you to share your amazing story and journey leading up to this position and share you know, your life experiences with our listeners first so they get to know you a little bit. Thank you so much, John, again, for giving me this opportunity. And, you know, I'm really happy that I had the privilege of being part of the University of Pennsylvania for so many years. Um, Actually, my dad was the lead gardener here at Penn, and he always wanted us to go to college. And we're from an immigrant background, so I was very, very honored that my father worked here and I was able to come to Penn because of him. And I worked full-time and went to school part-time. And, you know, I actually graduated from Penn with my degree in Italian Renaissance history and literature. And then after I graduated, I went to work for Alitalia Airlines, and I, I did airline sales for 17 years. And when they closed the airline here in Philadelphia, I came back to Penn uh, and was able to get a job in public relations, so I have nine years of uh, experience in public relations communications. I worked as a media relations person here at Wharton, and I was the person they would call, and I would arrange the interviews with the news media, and I also was the business manager for the Wharton magazine. And from this, I got to meet Eric Ortz, who's my current boss. And uh, he actually recruited me for this position, sustainability, in 2007. And I was able to come in uh, as the associate director at that time. Having a communications and public relations background uh, really, really helped me in in this job uh, because in 2007, it was still a rising, very popular rising trend sustainability and environmental management, whereas now uh, sustainability is really part of the fabric of every organization. So I was really glad to be part of that journey, and uh, being a kid from the the 60s and 70s, uh, sustainability, uh, recycling, waste management, uh, the earth, uh, that really was part of our DNA growing up in that era. So being able to do that later on in my life as part of my profession is huge. And uh, I'm really happy to be able to do that. For our listeners out there that want to learn more about what Joanne's doing at the Wharton Initiative for Global Environmental Leadership, you can go to igel.wharton.upenn.edu. And uh, I'm on the site right now. It's just amazing. And uh, you're just doing great things there. Can you share a little bit about what Wharton IGEL really is and how does it interface with business, Joanne? Well, you know, we started, as I said, in 2007. So we came in, uh, right. came in on the on the ground level, right. and the school at that time uh, had many different silos of environmental management. Whether it was on the operations side for the school operations and facilities, or it was part of uh, uh, the you know the the academic side. So back in 2007, uh, my current boss, Eric Ortz, who's the faculty director of IGEL. I wanted to really bring this uh, to a more academic focus school-wide. So at that time, they decided to have it housed in the Legal Studies and Business Ethics Department at the Wharton School because it was part of the social impact movement that's, you know, still going strong here at the University of Pennsylvania. 
Pennsylvania and Wharton. So we bring together, we're bringing together academia with government, non-government organizations and top business leaders in industry today. So, you know, we started out with a corporate advisory board, which we're very honored to have electronic recyclers on our advisory board. And we only invite companies that actually have part a huge part of sustainability. Obviously, electronic recyclers has that <laughs> right. in its in its repertoire. So uh, we don't invite just any company. You know, we're very proud to have excellent uh, members on this board, uh, which include uh, Bank of America, United Water, Xerox, Merck, uh, International Paper, Chet, wow. TZ, and most recently, electronic recyclers. Thank you, and thank you for inviting us on, and it's just an honor to participate. You know, can you talk a little bit about some of the the work that you do there? You know, you have all these great brands that you interface with. You're at one of the top, if not the top, business school in the world at Wharton. Can you share what your, you know, some of your conferences look like, and, and you know, and how does that uh, work with regards to moving the needle forward with regards to sustainability? Well, we have had, since 2007, we have had uh, some really interesting conferences, and they are research conferences because part of, uh, you know, we the way we make up these conferences, again, we want to bring in different types, diverse audiences. So we have the academic audience, which is represented by our faculty and also our peer school. We invite our peer schools to come and speak as well as part of these agendas uh, for our conferences and our students, obviously. But then again, our, our corporate leaders that are really, really, um, you know, prominent in this space and, you know, uh, government and non-government organizations. Uh, for example, uh, some of the conferences that we've planned have been uh, greening the supply chain, uh, valuing water, the energy, food, and water nexus, sustainability in the age of big data, and this April 22nd, Earth Day, we're mm. doing our eighth annual conference workshop, uh, which is about business takes the lead, how innovation will drive our mitigation adaptation to climate change. So these conferences are not just over, you know, once our conferences are over, <laughs> we actually publish uh, our special reports and knowledge at Wharton uh, about the conference proceedings. But then not just that, other you know, other things that maybe we didn't discuss at the conference. Ongoing conversations come out in this report. And it comes out about three to four months after the conference, and Knowledge at Wharton does go to three million subscribers. And what are the, explain again the special reports. Go a little bit more in depth about what the special reports are and why they're so important. Well, the special reports, you know, sometimes they are about the conferences we have. But sometimes they're about uh, specific topics that are important in the world. Uh, for example, waste management, electronic recycling, uh, valuing water, whether it's valuing water in a developing world where there's a, a crisis in water scarcity, where there are issues, uh, gender issues about the safety of young women that don't have access to water. Uh, could be about the food, you know, the population reaching 7 billion in the world. Uh, there's a real issue with food. Uh, what's going to happen in the future is, you mm. know, food security. That's another right. big issue. So these reports really delve into crucial topics that are affecting the world, that are affecting the world on a humanitarian basis, but on an economic level as well. Yeah. For our listeners who just joined us, we've got Joanne Spignardo with us today. She's the Senior Associate Director of Business Development at the Wharton Initiative for Global Environmental Leadership, which is called IGEL. Joanne, talk a little bit about um, how Wharton and Penn promote the sustainability curriculum that you're heading up. That's a great question, John. Uh, actually, we have been teaching here in the Legal Studies and Business Ethics Department at Wharton, we've been teaching environmental management for about 20 years. And wow. that's one of the ways that, you know, we actually also started IGEL because these, you know, these courses have been taught, you know, for, as I said, 20 years. Uh, but, you know, to kick it up a notch, we have here at the Wharton School on the MBA level, we do have majors in environmental management and social impact, as well as risk uh, management. Uh, on the undergraduate level, we also have concentrations 
uh, when the kids graduate with their Bachelor of Science in Economics on the graduate, uh, undergraduate level, they uh, pick concentration. And, you know, their primary concentration could be accounting, uh, finance, real estate, etc. But then a secondary concentration could be environmental management. So we were able to, to make that happen in, in the past six years uh, that IGEL has been in existence. And we also were able to do a dual degree program, which, you know, just five years ago we just started, which you can get your MBA and your master's in environmental science as well. So instead wow. of going to two years uh, for each one, you go for three years, but you get three degrees. And in addition to that, there's a school-wide sustainability minor on the undergraduate level. Uh, mm. Then we, we also have, in the School of Arts and Sciences, we have the Earth and Environmental Studies Department. And, you know, students actually, if they go to the college and get a Bachelor of Arts, they can, you know, major in environmental studies and sciences. So it's it's really, you know, it's a really big uh, curriculum. Uh, our current president, Amy Gutman, this is part of her agenda. It has been uh, for the past decade. We have a tremendous green campus partnership. We work very, very closely, with, as I said, with the School of, of, of uh, Arts and Sciences, Earth and Environmental Studies. Uh, we work very closely with the School of Engineering. Uh, you know, has huge has huge components in sustainability. Obviously, Penn Design. We work very closely with Penn Design and the mm. Cl- the Climate Center for Energy Policy. And here at Wharton, here at Wharton, all the departments now have sustainability again as a fabric. It's a, it's a fabric of the curriculum. Uh, sustainability is a part of the finance curriculum. It's part of the accounting curriculum. So management, marketing could go on and on. So it's no longer a trend. It's something mm. that you know is part of the economy and, and part of the curriculum here. That makes sense. And so since you've been there, the curriculum, the sustainability curriculum, has massively grown. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I Talk a little bit, and, and, since, and since you know you shared all the amazing degrees someone can earn um, in in that curriculum, can you share some of um, the courses that are relevant to MBA students who want to pursue careers in social impact, energy, or risk management? Absolutely. You know, we have courses in cost benefit analysis that focus on risk management. Uh, mm. Could be water risk, uh, energy risk, food security. They're all part of this course. Uh, we have uh, corporate sustainability, which is taught at the School of Arts and Sciences in the Master's of Environmental Studies program, which basically, you know, uh, does case studies on different industries, uh, and this, you know, students can focus on corporate social responsibility. Uh, in addition, we, you know, we actually do have like a, a water risk course. We have, as I mentioned, environmental management course. Mm. Uh, we have social impact. Uh, so many of the courses, uh, you know, we have energy economics. We have uh, the Wharton School has a, a public policy, a Wharton Initiative for Public Policy and uh, Business Economics and Public Policy Department that actually has four or five different courses in energy and economics. Uh, so, it's, as I said, it's, it's, it's a growing part of the economy. And, uh, you know, we're on the forefront along wow. with our peer schools that are doing the same thing. Talk a little bit about the Penn Wharton operations and how they work with you to improve sustainable practices as well. Well, we have a <laughs> wonderful. We had uh, several years ago, yeah. one of my uh, good friends, Emily Shapira, uh, she went to the MBA program and she was a real pioneer in sustainability. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when she graduated from her MBA, she actually. Uh, worked on getting, you know, getting herself a job in operations because Wharton, we have huge facilities in real estate services and, you know, we at that time did not have at the Wharton School a sustainability director. And Emily huh. actually created her job as a sustainability director to really bring in these green vendors, to bring in great companies like electronic recyclers here, <laughs> uh, you know, e-force waste and right. different companies that we work with directly. And, you know, to bring in like the, the paper that that's recycled, you know, Dome Tar. We work with very closely with Dome Tar. Um, and, you know, International Paper. International Paper is, you know, one of our big vendors that has recycled product. So that's something that, you know, has really grown in the past, I would say, five or six years that, you know, we have operations managers at facilities that are actually focused on sustainable practices, which was not the case 
when I first started here. So that's used not not, not just at Wharton, but throughout Penn. So, uh, uh, you know, the school has really done a lot as far as... Well, well, you know, it's what's really interesting, Joanne, is when I was uh, asked to speak by you last week, and that was such an honor to, to come down to Philadelphia and speak with some of the students over at your school, and you, you put together a little working lunch session, that some of your people from the waste section of operations came in to the sort of uh, uh, meeting room and they enjoyed the conversation and actually asked questions because they were looking to improve their processes and procedures themselves. And I was like, wow, they, they, they're really into it here. They're into it not only from a student perspective and an education perspective, but from an operations perspective, they just want to keep upping their game and do better w- whenever they can. Well, that's absolutely right. And, you know, we do have, um, you know, as far as the staff's concerned, we do have eco-reps, and you can volunteer to be an eco-rep for your department. So you, you basically, you know, you're in charge. It's all about great, you know, school-wide citizenship. It's about, the, you know, we're responsible for the earth. We're responsible for the things that we do and what we use. So here, you know, we try to demonstrate that as becoming an eco-rep. So during the summer, we have, you know, the heat waves. We power down. We turn off the air conditioner. And the eco-reps are sort of like the police. We're like the police of the department to make sure that everybody turns their computer off, that everybody doesn't use a lot of energy. So these, the people that came to your talk, which was amazing, by the way. You did a wonderful job, John. Thank you. We were That's so happy nice. to have you. Thank they you. they want to have every opportunity available to them to learn mm. more on how to become sustainable. So your talk was equally important to the students as well as the staff. And I think there was a couple fa- there were a couple um, uh, faculty members in there too. Yeah, no, it was great. And from that perspective, it was just and there was even a member of the EPA in there, the local EPA. That's right. I That's mean, right. so, I mean, it was just fascinating, um, you know, mixture of people and from all different disciplines. And it's just so nice how Wharton and IGEL welcomes everybody in with open arms and says, hey, let's constructively collaborate and make the world a better place together. Well, it's all about collaboration. Yeah. yeah. Can't you know, beat partnerships, that. Partnerships, partnerships, public, yeah. private educational partnerships, collaboration. This is what it's all about, you know, not just in the Penn community, uh, but, you know, in the global community. That's the only way we're going to be able to survive. For our listeners out there, we're down to the last two minutes. We have listeners not only in the United States, around the world, and we have a lot of entrepreneurs and businesses. How can entrepreneurs or businesses that are listening right now today help you help students with research projects and internships at Wharton's IGEL program? We would love to have anyone that's interested to propose an internship uh, uh, project or a research project to us. They would just uh, would send it to me. Uh, my email address is spigonaj at wharton.upenn.edu. Our students are hungry for opportunities in this space. Obviously, it's all about gaining skills. It's not just about making money. It's the skills that are going to help you make the money and also improve the world at the same time. So the students sometimes will take an internship or a research project unpaid in order to get the network, in order to get the mentorship, and, you know, obviously to get the opportunity to get wonderful skills. So, you know, anybody can contact us. We're, you know, we're willing to look at the project and, you know, see if we can come up with a good fit. Joanne, we're down to the last minute. I'll leave, I'll leave the final thoughts for you before we have to sign off today. Well, I, I really appreciate this opportunity to speak on your show, John. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be in a partnership with you. As I said, it takes, uh, you know, real, you know, corporate, uh, you know, we need not just corporate citizens. We need global citizens. We need community citizens in order to build collaboration and sustainability going forward. It's good for the world and it's good for the economy. So thank you again for having me on thank the show. You. Thank you, Joanne. And for our listeners out there that want to learn more about the, the great program at Wharton, Wharton's Initiative for Global Environmental Leadership, please go to igel, I-G-E-L dot Wharton dot U-Pen dot E-D-U. Thank you, Joanne, for being an inspirational and visionary leader and my friend. You are truly living proof that green is good.